Okay, so on to our first question. From working in geophysics and advertising, how did you decide to give it all up and begin Banyan Tree events and build a career out of music? So actually, uh, it's not as if suddenly we uh, got attracted to music. We are both trained musicians. And he used to be a child prodigy in Hyderabad. As a tabla player, he was very popular. He even received the prestigious national scholarship for tabla. But then, you know how it is, uh, at least how it was back then, that uh, studies were most important. And then he took up geophysics. And that's how life continued for him. So music has been always there. Uh, from childhood. So the passion for music, performing arts is always there. But professionally, I've done my master's in geophysics and I work with the government. But somewhere, you know, we said uh, we should do more for performing arts. So that's how uh, from geophysics to music, I jumped and she will. I, before advertising, I was teaching sociology in a college. And I remember I used to feel very sad that the students were really missing out on such beautiful aspects of our performing arts. So in my individual capacity as a lecturer, I was anyways organizing lecture demonstrations and stuff. And uh, I really felt that youngsters should not miss out on this. So, you know, we are like, we were parallelly doing similar things. And then of course, after that, we got married. And then much later when I was in advertising and one fine day, he said that the more we delay, the more, you know, we are losing focus. So now we need to take the plunge. So he first started Banyan Tree and Inad uh, Music. And I was still in advertising because one person had to float. Both can't, you know, burn the boat and jump into the sea. So one had to be. So we decided to take turns initially. And uh, that's how Banyan Tree was born. And then I joined him full time two years later. Thank you so much. That was really inspiring. Um, so on to my second question. Mystic and folk music is quite an unconventional genre to propagate. So what prompted you to nurture this form? So folk music is, I would say, the largest canvas of performing arts in India or across the world. And uh, from the beginning, uh, in fact, uh, before me, Nandini has started doing research work in uh, the folk music of Rajasthan. So after my master's, when I started uh, thinking of uh, research, I was invited for a seminar uh, on ethnomusicology. And back then, there was no department of ethnomusicology. And I heard this great scholar from Rajasthan, Komal Kothari, talk about Mangani arts. And I was really spellbound by what he talked about the music and the social cultural milieu and the the way the community interacts and how the whole system was so i started this was way back in 87 1987 so started studying i used to go to the villages live with them and study their music so that's how this whole journey started and i realized that you know the folk forms in a way were so much more real in the sense anybody can connect anybody can relate so yeah. i was always attracted to folk performing arts and he of course also had a different perspective towards the uh, sound textures so that's how we we thought of you know bringing it on the main stage and besides our own regular uh, uh, festivals we started focusing on folk as well so it was like a it was quite an organic uh, progression, so to say. Mystic yes. music. And of course, mystic music, you know, words cannot really express. We've, uh, even at the cost of sounding pony, I would say that we did experience in the journey of uh, exploring uh, different forms and finding there were some really uh, amazing experiences. And that made us understand and realize that in India, music is not just about instrument and the lyrics, and there is so much layered uh, presence of so many factors. And, you know, there are across the country, there are said poets who've had amazing uh, experiences and who've chosen music to convey those deep, beautiful spiritual truths through their works. And they have survived in the remotest corners of our country 
orally passed down generation to, through millennia they have survived and they are living tradition and that kind of hit us we said oh my god everything else will continue but this has to be people have to know about this rich heritage so that's how this so whole mystic uh, music is also started. conveyed through folk music yes it's very powerful that was so passionate thank you so much ma'am um so speaking of mystic and folk music how did you come up with your flagship event ruhaniyat did the speed of its growth surprise you or challenge you in any way a ruhaniyat is always a challenge from the day one even now when you do because it is it is a very vast uh, experience of program uh, in 2000 nobody even believed that what we are trying to do you know what is the kind of genre you are trying to see actually i think we genuinely were ahead of our time so you know when we we were talking of uh, spreading uh, messages of uh, peace point, universal yeah. brotherhood and you know reaching the divine through the medium of music and Uh, transcending all man-made divides. So we were going, we were, you know, we were going looking for partners and sponsors, and we were trying to explain people what Ruhaniyat we want to convey through this festival, and people just didn't understand. So we waited two years, and then finally, we actually we wanted to uh, open the millennium with this festival, but there were no takers. So finally, in two thousand, we decided let's go out of pocket, but we have to do it, and that's how uh, Ruhaniyat was born. but it has been a beautiful journey uh maybe around something around 5000 artists from yeah, across so the world far. have been featured in this it's very demanding yeah. it is true it's very demanding but just equally satisfying i mean every time each each edition of ruhaniyat poses its own unforeseen challenges and each time uh, we feel that okay we've been guided the right way and you land up on your feet and everything goes off fine there were there are numerous experiences where you feel oh my god we couldn't have done this there is as if there is you know a third source supporting us it's a very beautiful feeling right okay so so my next question is about the upcoming world jazz festival So, what led to organizing this festival in Mumbai under Banyan Tree Events, which was pro- uh, previously centered under Indian culture? Uh, we still continue to promote Indian culture in a much more bigger way than what we started in nineteen ninety six. Today, uh, our work of promoting performing arts, classical music, folk music, and dance is multiplied by four times more. but at the same time we have a selfish reason that i want our musicians indian musicians to collaborate with the world so we have been invited for various uh, i would say forums of you know festivals and we saw uh, jazz festivals are most organized world jazz is a new genre you know it's world music and jazz music together yeah. and uh, always remember that when we bring in the musicians from the world our selfish reason is that our musicians also get an exposure yeah. in interacting with them so world jazz coming to india is one is new genre second day is a beautiful platform for collaborations so that is the idea for bringing in world jazz so do you see the company evolving further in terms of genres yes yes we are evolving into many more genres but uh keeping our roots uh, the ma- ma- major focus is folk music classical music is and also bhakti music that indian is, performing arts yeah, continue a wide, to be a, a wide i would say canvas right so you started banyan tree events with the intention of raising awareness of niche indian performing arts and local artists why local artists and what is your process for locating these artists and bringing them on board oh the process is continuous even when you're sleeping the process is on <laughs> so uh, uh this process is on from day one you know i would say before banentry started also identifying the local forms like seeing what is there what is presentable how we can improve it what we can do so that's why i think the local artists are given much more priority than i would say a classical musician because 
uh, folk artists, uh, many states you're you're losing out. Right? Some states are uh, totally um, modernized towards film industry, so the the folk arts are going and they are dying. Like they're so our responsibility is much more to preserve the folk art artists. You can add. Actually, you know, in India, the problem is of plenty. There is so much. And even after so many years being in the field, finding so many forms, we are still discovering. It is just two weeks ago, we did this uh, uh, camp, so to say. You know, during lockdown, we discovered there were so many distress calls from so many folk artists, families who have been part of our uh, festivals. And we realized that they were in, you know, folk artists were really, really in bad shape. And that's how we started this new initiative of Meri Kala, Meri Pechan, through which initially it was just about reaching essentials, food grains and medicines and whatever. And then we started you know, giving them capsule uh, digital performance opportunities. And it kind of evolved that way. So uh, then we have started this center about 105 kilometers from Mumbai in a place uh, called Chambulpada. So this whole folk community center, we have started working, the structure has come up and the work also slowly starting. So two weeks back, just to give an example, we did our first camp and we focused only on the uh, village forms, uh, folk forms from village of Maharashtra. And, you know, honestly, we, we feel we know <laughs> considerably more about our four forms compared to so many people, even our generation. And we were zapped. There were forms we still discovered. There is something called Shabda Bhed. And, you know, I couldn't believe such an evolved form system. is, it's just scattered. Hmm. There are drummers who play, like, you know, he came up to us and he said, give me a line, give me a line, okay? Yeah. Or a name or whatever. So he is standing next to us. And the team is like at least 15, 20 feet away. And they're constantly like busy playing and tuning. So there's no way they could have heard. So we gave him a line. And this man standing next to us, he played different rhythmic patterns. Okay. And the one of the man over there is writing down. And at the end of it, he read out the line. The other man on the other side of the hall, I mean, of the arena. This is alive. Even today, in 2022 and even people like us who go to interiors we are also discovering so there is so much in our country and you know it really urgently needs to be located tapped and most important is they have to feel self-respect they have to feel needed and valued mm -hmm. and that is this whole uh, effort about so so meri kala meri pechan is the future for bringing an, uh, under under one umbrella of bringing all the folk performers un, under it will be a connection to the world it will be a connection to the government it will be a connection to the institutions it will also enhance the performing uh i would say value like Your presentation, it, presentation in terms of the costumes and so uh, coming back to the question stage the presence. need for folk music folk arts is much more I think that's a very heartwarming thought, giving smaller local artists, you know, the platform to showcase their talents. Um, so for our last question, I wanted to ask you both about your future goals for the organization. Uh, so Bani and Tree started out with a vision to preserve, nurture and promote and propagate the rich heritage of performing arts of India. How much closer towards your goals do you think you are today? Uh, or over 25 years down the road? In one line, I can say we are satisfied because the, the main reason for banditry was bringing in today's corporate world and the performing arts uh, nearer. Uh, we always tell the corporate world, they are the kings today, they should nurture the performing arts. So the reason, first reason was that somehow corporate should support the performing arts. So today, when we see uh, across India, there is a sensitivity uh, of corporate supporting the performing arts. In that way, I would say humble way, Banyantri played a small role in bringing this change in their minds. So we are satisfied. At the same time, I think the work is much more 
we need to do much more we would like to bring in many more youngsters into uh, some of our ngos or our work and spread the word and do much more but it is a satisfying journey i think it's like you know uh, halfway so to say we feel that live concerts will continue they can and they should continue but now we feel uh, even more urgently we need to document connect and you know uh, adapting to the new technology and seriously i feel that youngsters i mean this whole heritage you are the uh, uh, heir so to say you don't know what gold mine is awaiting you all i mean yeah. sometimes i feel oh my god how do we bring them how do we let them know all this is theirs and they have to they are not just worthy of it but they have to add their nuanced understanding of technology and whatever other because each generation has its own learnings and experiences so you all have to take it now from us further so i feel now we are 25 years are complete banentry is here but now live concerts can continue with the team we need to focus more and more on research. you know research and documentation and passing it on to the youngsters really it is needed very strongly and urgently <laughs> so of course uh, I, i would always say that the youngsters should join us and take this cause further Uh, yeah. uh, there is no limit any part of the country we work across the country so if somebody is from delhi somebody from north somebody from south we have been working across so i think over to the next generation will be very happy you can't get this meaning on a google search you have to go to the village <laughs> you have to see those forms you have to see the into the eyes of the folk musicians who want to say something and yeah. then only you feel satisfied